Yeah, welcome uh, to the last talk of the uh, convention. It's called um, Fantasy Game Soundtrack Production in an Open Source Ecosystem. Uh, actually, I had to turn to read it, even though it's my title. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, to um, disappoint somebody, uh, to not disappoint anybody later, there will be no game here. It's just about the music. So if you, if you think this is about um, game engines, uh, etc., sorry. It's, uh, yeah, let me get this cable. Oh. All right. Okay, and um, yeah, my name, I have no contact info, so my name is Nils Hilbricht, I'm uh, here from Cologne, and um, I'm actually a music teacher in a public school, but my, my hobby interest for some time now is um, game soundtracks, of course, because I play games and um, since, since ever, so it's uh, only natural that I, as a musician, and uh, I wanted to to make my own soundtracks. Um, it went all, it went pretty well with the soundtracks. Uh, and then in 2000, 2007, I switched to Linux. And end of the story. <laughs> no, uh, but it, uh, it became a bit more complicated, to be honest. And that is part of the talk. Um, what, is, what is this about? OK. So. Uh, small structure. Uh, I may skip some points because um, this is obviously an experienced audience. So, um, so short section what is explaining some, some terms. Um, then constraints and challenges. This is um, a more abstract uh, point to see what, what is demanded from a game soundtrack and how to achieve this. Um, some examples and um, Examples actually includes already some questions and uh, maybe discussion points. And then um, as a bonus, um, how to do this in a 100% open source environment, which is not, um, obviously, if I mention it there, then the rest of the talk may be about not 100% open source. So let's see what this is all about. First, the music. I told all the speakers in several emails, music first, music first. Now I forgot it myself. Okay, um, this is the... Crashing, this is a known bug. Uh, mop, mop C, no, it's mock P. There. And let's take this. Bye. 
that's that you have nothing that you wouldn't be able uh, you, you weren't able to hear anything a gap now that's an important point later okay it's looped yeah we actually crossed the loop already okay um but more on that later of course so um this was one example um as i think of a fantasy um fantasy themed song uh, from a soundtrack maybe and um the fantasy is just a placeholder um for yeah let's say acoustic instruments or uh, real sounding instruments or some some kind of um typical um instruments it's more uh, its own tradition uh, right now than anything um yeah there are no no real reasons except we want a certain set of expected sounds and um of course that is not that can be found in a, ver a variety of uh, genres but in a fantasy soundtrack it's most pure that's why i chose this title uh so what is the fantasy game then it's a uh, scene based the um the scene is just one game scene it can be um like an, an actual scene um a scenery a, a landscape maybe some some kind where the player or his player character is and um yeah the scenes can change but that's uh, the most important point actually of um of the whole genre the scenes can change but this is in the hand of the player so at no point um it's not scripted it's not a movie at no point does the game um the game does not know when will the, the music change for example it's a, a calm scene and um there may there is a possibility of a fight against some monster and when will this happen we don't know it can be random it can be the player chooses to go to the monster and say now i attack or um it can be some some random timer or some yeah whatever but the the main part is here um the game does not know in 20 seconds um i have to change the scene and especially not one scene is three minutes long and then the music and the scene change there is there are games like um 2D scrolling shooters, top-down arcade shooters, which just scroll and uh, so there you can um, make a scripted music where you exactly know how long it will be. But here it's not possible. That means you play one piece of music or several um, and they repeat, they loop um, over and over again. It is possible that um, um, maybe a five-minute song in the game the player can hear it for six hours maybe not not at um not in in one go but um overall in the whole the whole experience maybe five minute music for six hour experience possible and it's not um actually it's not um as bad as it sounds um yeah like i said play behavior is not predictable um also we talk about games um modern games so basically we can choose whatever kind technical music we want there's no limitation in disk space or um, ram uh, memory um, no like 8-bit computer music um, where you have to share cycles with the graphics and have a limited amount of voices or so it's um you can do what you want you record it and then you have a wave file and that's it <coughs> so, <coughs> so oh, sorry <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I I, uh, I assumed my voice was actually so loud, and I forgot the microphone. So <laughs> better. Um, so, what is this ecosystem uh, in the title? Yeah, it's basically um, your computer setup. So um, you, the infrastructure in my Linux case, Jack, or whatever other systems provide. Um, which programs do you use? Um, to create, I won't show the sequence, and we have seen it many times. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we have seen it many times, um, like Ardor or others, or Qtractor or anything that has sequencer in the name, basically. Um, but also, um, uh, as a sequencer here, I count uh, notation editors, like, um, let's say, the most famous one is MuseScore, but there's also Denemo, and um, the more obscure things, like uh, my own program, uh, Laboreo, which only a few know. Um, because I don't advertise it much. <laughs> um, uh, but actually that I have my own program, which I want to make my music with, is an important point later. 
Um, and of course, um, there's the option of real recording. I count that as, as sequencing here. And um, yeah, or it's all point. So, and resources um, is um, just a term for, for everything uh, else, like instruments. So instruments um, are mostly sampled instruments, but can also be synthesizers or um, very rare, rare cases of um, physical modeling, like piano tech, maybe you know it. So, just very short, what does open source here mean? Um, like I said yesterday in the morning, it's, um, no, <coughs> sorry, one moment. Yeah. Um, I think um, most of you know this already. So um, the user, usual open source licenses that allow you basically to make uh, and modify uh, the programs on your own. And um, the, the, the distribution is actually not that important here uh, in terms of programs, but um, maybe the, out, the, the distribution of the outcome, the result is important. So this is... Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I have one joke. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, no I'm, not, I'm really bad at jokes. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, let's go on. Uh, <laughs> no, the best jokes I can remember are always jokes that are either cruel or overly sexual or so, and I can't, <laughs> I can't do that now. <laughs> we have yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, now it gets uh, real. So, um, who are people who compose uh, game soundtracks? I think it's um, the lone wolf producer. So that means um, he or she works alone, um, rarely in small teams, and um, in uh, um, in its own uh, in its own studios, like um, yeah, um, little recording spaces, and. Um, there are economic reasons, of course, because you can't, um, yeah, you can't pay regular musicians. Um, you can't employ musicians for comp uh, for soundtrack um, production. That gets expensive very, very fast. And um, also, soundtrack composers for games are not the best paid uh, job in the world. So working in teams already, um, yeah, the benefit is not not that big. There are teams, but um, it's the exception. And um, yeah, what do I think are the benefits for a um, uh, soundtrack producer using open source software? Some, but not all, um, soundtrack producers, especially high profile ones like, um, let's say, Jerry Musol, or in the movie business, um, I think Hans Zimmer, they have um, actually their own set of software, their own set of sa sampled instruments, of course, they use um, uh, commercial ones, but basically they have their contractor um, programmers who they, um, they say, yeah, I want this into this workflow. This is my, my style of composition, of production. And the programmers say, all right, I do it. Um, pay me, of course. And um, open source, as we know it, uh, is easier to modify than um, other kinds of software. That's where I see... Um, Already, um, we don't have to program even. Already the flexibility we've seen in the last two days here, like Kala in, in Kala in Kala, and um, connecting everything uh, with uh, tools like Jack. That's already so flexible. If you add programming and scripting um, to that, you, have, you can create your own setup um, very easily or much easier than in, in other uh, ecosystems. And I think... Um, the software adapts to the musician here, to the producer, and that is much easier in an open source environment. 
And if you remember that I said the software adapts to, sorry, that's a different talk. <laughs> so I'm a bit, a bit uh, nervous from the last two days. Okay. <laughs> I have a different talk about my notation program where I say, no, you have to learn the program the way it is. You have to adapt to the software and not the other way around. And now here I am saying, oh, you, the, 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 the environment adapts to the composer, of course. So that is not, that is a contradiction maybe, but um, only in my words, not in my meaning. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was not a joke. That was actually a, a Rousseau, Rousseau, uh, Citation. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, let's see. Um, what do you need to compose soundtracks? The first and maybe most important is how to compose, compose actually the music um, to get the right mood. So, for example, um, my imaginary scenery, like a green landscape, nothing's really going on, maybe friendly. Um, here, dog-like creatures running around, and um, so yeah, no, no, just one head. Uh, it's um, <laughs> it's a uh, it's a very very uh, calm. Um, so how do you make this in music? So um, maybe not by choosing um, electric guitars. So you choose like like an, like a harp, for example. Mm. That's already a bit a bit sad. So, so obviously the the instrument alone does not make the mute the mood. Oh, I, I've learned to play with one hand. So the other hand in my daily job is to to play with one hand and the other say you stop talking, you work. So yeah. Uh, so. That's obviously um, um, the most hard part. Learn to compose, practice your instrument skills, um, go to um, university or to courses or to classes for several years of your life, and then um, lots of practice. So obviously I can't explain that now in five minutes. Um, so that is the, the traditional music side, traditional music side of this, um, of this job, let's say. Uh, more specific, how to compose scene transitions. So it is possible that this green scenery changes to fight scenery. So how do we do it now? Um, I'm not going to, uh, to demonstrate this because I just have one instrument ready, ready right now. So um, what can you do? For example, you can distortion. Yeah, actually, actually it's, uh, I can prove it. It's right in here in my script. You can distort the signal and then um, um, let another signal come out clean, like a crossfade. Or just do a crossfade. Simple, uh, simple method. Um, so there's an, an audio engineering side of the uh, uh, problem, uh, solution to the problem. Or you can play um, a crash symbol or something like this. Um, which makes the whole spectrum full. And then all of that can come a new uh, piece of music. If you started, when it's a fight scene, if you started with drums alone, then um, you can basically ignore any clash from conflicting harmonies. Um, what I mean with this is um, conflicting harmonies, you play in one harmony and then the other piece has to match. easily because it's the most simple um, transition. It's just one, one fifth up, up, so from C major to G minor, which is not really far away in harmonic terms. So if you know your music theory, you can choose your tonal structures around um, matching, matching um, 
path, so to speak. Um, much harder is to actually compose transitional pieces. It's um, it's of course possible, but you need to, to know a lot. Need to know a lot more about modulation, but uh, harmonic modulation, how to go from one key to the other in a rather elegant way. But um, hmm? Still yeah, but many people know that. So uh, it's more economical choice that you have to um, with all the combinations. Let's say you have. Uh, only three different uh, green scenes, and that leads to the same fight music. So now you have to one transition in, uh, there and back for each of these pieces. And it's if it's more than two pieces, there's some triangle configuration. It gets more and more and more. So most composers don't do this just for time and um, economic reasons. How to create a musical corporate identity is um, choose the right instruments, choose your right, um, choose some kind of effects that um, you think you sound well, and then don't change them for some time. For example, this is one example. Um, so, for some time means to the next game. Um, you finish a game, and uh, another game studio comes to you and says, "Yeah, we want." Um, we want you to make our soundtrack next, and then just choose the same setup. Maybe slight changes, slight, um, very uh, transitional, uh, very small steps um, to transition from one instrument to another. Maybe there's a new library out, and you take this because it sounds better. But don't uh, change everything together because I've seen this because that leads to um, yeah, basically that's your road to fame. If um, uh, recognition by ear is the only thing you get from the players, and if they, if the, if the players say, "Yeah, that's the new game from um, who did I use earlier? Uh, Jeremy Soul. There's a new game soundtrack by Jeremy Soul. I want to play this." So you're talking about the composer, not of yeah, yeah, of the composer. Yeah, right. So what is your what is your trademark sound, for example? Um, there are many ways to achieve this, but I think um, consistency is um, very important. It's tempting to change everything because you think it's a different game, but maybe not. Oh yeah, that's what I uh, just said. Uh, that's um, actually a very uh, can progress very fast here. Um, these are the technical um, points you have to uh, problems you have to solve. One is um, how to convert your ideas into information. That is basically how how do you record it? MIDI keyboard, for example, or sequencer with your mouse or keyboard. How to convert this information into songs with the resources I mentioned? You need samples, you need synthesizers, you need effects, <coughs> and so on. Um, how to match and equalize and align these sounds so they sound from the same source. Because um, sample instruments, actually that's the old microphone. Uh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, that's the, uh, the audio engineering part. So how do you combine samples from different sources so they sound um, like they are recorded in the same room. Um, reverb, for example. Not a lot, but choose the right amount of reverb. Equal, uh, equalizer uh, is actually in the word. Um, use equalizers, the audio engineering side. So you have to know how you have to be a businessman. You have to um, be a musician and a composer. You have to be an audio engineer. And um, distribution is... Um, yeah, the easiest part actually send the file to your employer, um, and that's it basically. So you have to learn how to use email or FTP service or whatever they use. That's it. Okay, Emacs. Yeah. Um, once uh, one point more. Um, these uh, constraints, 
actually um, define your sound, your, the genre. So one thing I didn't mention is how long are, um, no, I did say five to five to ten minutes, maybe one one piece of music. And um, this scene-based music requires a certain style. So um, let's take this scenery, the green one, uh, again, and see if this works. No. So it was faster, um, it went faster, some uh, tempo ramped up, dynamic ramped up, some um, harmonic changes. And uh, I would say this is not, um, this will not work because the player decides when the action changes most of the time. So here I, I had scripted, a scripted narrative, like you said it yesterday, a narrative in my music. And um, you want you can have some narrative, but don't stray away from the mood. So this is not a very um, classical, in the classical period sense, or uh, romantic, like 19th century music. Um, it's more like a baroque music, where you have one, one mood, one idea, and explore this through various techniques. Uh, but don't stray away too far. So if you want the next mood, do it in another scene. And these are technical constraints from the game engine, from the game design, um, some traditions from actual technical constraints. They influence the music. <clears throat> okay. Um, you've already heard the, the harp here, which is actually not um, at a good sound level because it's uh, unprocessed. This is the setup here. Okay, can you see it in the back there? Or I can... Okay, this is uh, an example setup, just the sound side, there's no sequencer because I'm playing live. Um, the demo in the beginning was played live into Ardor as well. Um, yeah, let's hear that again. Um, two of the instruments are the, the harp is in there, and also the bassoon. And more instruments uh, I haven't uh, here right now. <clears throat> so I can actually play it where we left off.
the loop. Um, if you can re re read this, this is um, in C minor here, and it starts in C minor again, so there's no conflict at all. Um, if I start this again and hope it will not um, crash like before. Listen to the, um, there is some, some reverb at the beginning of the song. This, I do it again. This, this is actually the ending. This is not the most elegant loop, I have to admit. But why is this in there? Because the actual recording I played twice and only took the second part. Okay. Um, you've seen the notes. Um, we've heard some instruments. Let me show you another um, version. Actually, the original version of this. It, um, the subtitle is for... Where is it? it? The subtitle is For Old Time's Sake, and the title is Simona the Sorceress. There's actually a game, Simon the Sorcerer, from the 90s. And um, this is from um, some years ago. So uh, it was me um, in my nostalgia. Uh, and this is the original version. Here the loop is actually in the middle of the song. You can't see it. Uh, we are just in the in the middle of the song now, so it's recorded twice uh, in a row. So um, obviously you you were able to hear this is the same piece of music, but different instruments. The um, the this one was the, or, the original one, just made with some random uh, eight megabyte um, SF2 sound font, uh, loaded in fluid synth and MIDI sequencing, just straight. The other version um, is me playing um, some more modern uh, SFZ samples uh, loaded in Kala and recorded just one by one from the notation uh, into into Ardor. So this is a this very simple setup actually. Um, MIDI keyboard in. Yeah, I'm sitting in front of it, right? 
Um, MIDI keyboard in. This is just technical because uh, I want the um, signal split into several channels. Then um, here's the real deal. One channel for the bassoon. Channel two here. And one channel for the harp. This goes into a reverb, Zeta reverb actually, which is my favorite. And um, out of the system. Um, of course, this is just an example setup here for live. Um, but not that, um, yeah, there's not much added if you, if you um, make recordings. Maybe some slight uh, equalizer or compressor. But um, yeah, if you record instruments like classical instruments in a, in a live setup, mostly they are already balanced. So they, they play that it sounds good and you just point the microphone. And um, I try to emulate this um, in, the, in my sample music as well. I try to find instruments that, that sound good, maybe modify them a bit and then um, just add reverb. If you talk to classical audio engineers, um, some of them will say, oh, you don't need any, any audio engineering, just take the most expensive reverb you can get, the, the best one. That is the important part. The rest doesn't matter that much. And um, this is some this is uh, this approach here. And um, yeah, let's check the bassoon. Now that's our, um, can we have this a bit louder? So, how do you choose the instrument? This is one I got for free from some. Um, um, community orchestra, what is it, playing orchestra, so I, I don't remember, there are some of these. And um, so I'm, I'm loading the instrument and then playing a bit around. Now I play fast. Ah, okay, now. That sounds like crap. So now, what is the consequence of this? It's not, oh, I learned how to compose and I know what a bassoon is in, in reality and bassoons play these moves, these fast. They play it and it sounds great. So, of course, I learned this is how a bassoon works. I write it down or sequence it or whatever. Um, and then I choose the sample instruments and it sounds like crap, but I say, no, it's the instrument's fault. Uh, a real bassoon has to play it, so and this is my music, I want it this way, so the instrument is crap, I don't care. That's the exactly the, the opposite way how it should be. So first, in this type of music, if it's a free instrument, it's, it's the most expensive commercial orchestral library you can get for maybe 50,000 euro or so, how much they cost. Uh, it doesn't matter, first you choose the instrument and look what what actually sounds well. Check the pitch. And now I'm already adjusting my playstyle because there's some delay in here. This, the attack is not fast enough. The, the sample is not recorded um, like the others. So I have to know that. Maybe don't play that note at all or keep it in mind and offset in the minus direction once it's recorded in the sequ sequencer. So just, you have to know these instruments. Of course it does not take years like learning a real instrument, but each and every instrument has to be learned like a real instrument. This get, with enough experience, this is very fast, so you can, let's say, take a week or maybe some days, who knows. Um, but you have to learn these instruments, uh, otherwise it will, you compose a fast move and yeah okay that was not the best playing and you just don't hear what you mean so it's not possible um, and this is true for all kinds of libraries no matter how how expensive um, you can expect sampled instruments to sound like real instruments in the same vein there is actually a an instrument called staccato bassoon in this library. But this is not it. This is the sustain sound. So the sustain means hold. 
which sounds okay. But yeah, here in the lower regions, uh, that sounds quite good. So, only because some instrument has staccato in its file name, doesn't mean you have to choose this for staccato, this and only this for staccato, no. Um, ignore the file names, just listen to it and then decide what do I want this, um, how can I use this in a composition. So these are your, your players, these are your um, human players and you have to compose music for them. Okay, let's see. Yeah, that was an example. Um, and if it doesn't sound good, don't do it. That's, that's the only uh, consequence I can um, recommend. So, in the... Watch the time, okay. Um, I will come back later to how, is, how does this behavior translate, or this um, philosophy translate to the Linux or open source audio um, environment. <clears throat> Because the outcome is not so good, many instruments don't sound good here. And um, what do you do to actually stay productive? Um, you compromise a little. So um, if you are Richard Starman, your open source fantasy soundtrack dream is over now. It does, just doesn't work. Uh, I've actually written an article on the Linux. Uh, it was on my site, but it was cited on these um, LWN uh, website, the Linux News, some thumbs of the bigger ones. It was titled I Give Up. And um, that was um, five, four years ago and it's still, it's slightly better now, but no, you can't really do it. So you have to compromise a little. Um, it's easier if you use um, if you use Windows, but even in a Linux system or even BSD or whatever. Uh, I will tell what you, what you see there. Sorry, camera. <laughs> Um, so the general approach is build yourself um, an open source um, system, like um, recording setup, sequencing setup, effects, some synthesizers. Um, only because it's fantasy doesn't mean you have to um, rely solely on sample instruments, not at all. There are many, many good uh, synthesizers useful for this um, genre. Then um, Use this um, effects, there are fantastic effects like the Calf plugins or um, the Sita reverb, uh, which I used earlier. Then um, use whatever possible you have for sample instruments. Um, this includes setting up a Windows or Apple computer next to each other and connecting them somehow over whatever possible jack, uh, jack network or even just MIDI, MIDI cables there and audio cables back. Um, samples cost money. So uh, I mentioned earlier there are uh, sampled libraries in the ten thousands of euros. And this is actually reasonable, I think. These are reasonable pr prices if you think what goes into producing such libraries. You have, in, this ca in these cases, a whole orchestra which must, um, you record it for weeks and months, up to a year. I don't know the actual process, I was never involved. Um, you record them for quite some time. You have to pay them all. You have to pay. You have to get the room. You have to pay many, many audio engineers if they are not on your sample production team. Then only then the programming starts. And the more preparation you put into the recording process, um, the better. Because there's no there's no way to fix this in post. You have to get good material in the first place. The recording, otherwise. It will just not work. And so sample libraries cost money. There are, of course, um, libraries which cost only, um, let's say, 50 euros for one instrument. I, con I consider this, if it's a good instrument, it's a good price. There are some for 15 euros, which are maybe some simpler instrument, which is still OK. Um, but um, yeah, I often say it's not possible for the to, um, for a sample solution, sample instrument solution, to be solved by some uh, Linus Torvalds effort, um, someone 
with a cat in a bathrobe um, in the basement and says no contact for the next half a year and I will hack the I will program the Linux kernel and then when it's usable I will push it out to the world. That's just not possible. No matter how much programming effort you take, you need to record these things. Uh, and you need to involve other people, you need to make business, you need to employ people. So um, no wonder there exists no open source, um, no good open source sampled libraries. Uh, there are some instruments, um, I don't have a list, sorry, but um, there exist some instruments for the record, uh, recording, like the Salamander piano, which is very good, um, or the, the drum gizmo, um, drums, very good. Um, uh, Aeolus, the organ synthesizer actually, um, like church organ synthesizer, fantastic piece of software, sounds very good. Um, there are some um, like uh, bell-like sounds um, in Sunet SubFX, for example, very good. Uh, and uh, yeah, Cowbells. Uh, and um, yeah, but you have to select them. The harp I have is medium quality, you have to really select what you play with it. Um, this is called, um, I don't know, so, sorry, no time for that. Um, but uh, I can put it online sometime. So um, there exists some, um, and mostly percussive. So is it, if you imagine a recording process, microphone or microphones on an instrument, and then you have to play them. The easiest instruments are piano and drums and, um, uh, everything like it. So, because it's just note on, let the instrument ring out, next note. Build a robot, for example, or have a very good um, piano player who controls the velocity very good, and you can say, yeah, let's play um, um, eight velocity, eight, uh, eight different strengths of your key press. And uh, then, for each key, and each key, let's say five times for repetitions. So you can see, already, if you have one octave, eight notes only, eight times five is 40 for the repetition sounds, because otherwise you get some machine gun effect, it's called often, and um, it's 40 and then, um, yeah, and so on. And for, for an eight note instrument, easily 200 samples. And the, um, there was actually um, just last week someone in the Linux uh, Musicians Forum asked, asked this, I want to sample, I want to start sampling, what can I do, seven note instrument? And I've told him, yeah, um, do you want to make it good from the start or just some, some exper experiment? And the, oh, the, um, between the lines is what, I want to make something good. It's a simple instrument, okay, I can make it good. I told him, yeah, seven notes, uh, three velocity layers, uh, five times repetitions equals 105 samples. No, that's too much. Okay, I can, from the personal point of view, I can understand this. Um, of course you don't want it, but that leads to even the simpler instrument cannot be um, sampled if you don't have the time and the patience um, to take the hours and days and weeks, um, even for a um, percussive instrument, which is the easiest, because then you have things like a string, a bowed instrument, so it's very hard, all the different playing techniques and, um, and the, you have to have a good um, start of the sound and then a long sustain, a loop, um, the bow, in principle, a good player can make it sound like it's indefinitely, no, what's the word, for forever, uh, infinite, yeah, uh, it play, play one note for infinite time and um, then it has to stop somehow and you have to record each of these separately and then put them together in a programming um, engine. So this takes time and this times whole orchestra. Of course, that takes time and even then it does sound bad very often because it's hard, it's a hard thing. And um, yeah, what you can do to solve, uh, to um, make it a bit better is uh, at least support open file formats like the SFC, which is quite cap um, capable. Um, well, in the commercial setting, I would say this is um, technology like from 2005 maybe. And um, you can do quite a lot of it and it will go sound good, especially for um, pianos and so on. 
Um, you can use them in a proprietary freeware host, a freeware host, or um, just wait for new really open tech. Um, in Linux, we have the Linux sampler, which is actually also available in Windows and uh, Mac OS, but it's still called Linux sampler, and um, which is not not an open source program. It's some some kind of freeware, but um, you can't really uh, enhance it in the um, and make it better in this normal community uh, spirit as some of us know. <coughs> and yeah, just, but um, wait, support the SFZ and then, like I said, else just buy it, use it on a, um, on a different computer or in Wine or in virtual machine, whatever works. If you really want to stay competitive, um, if you want to make money, then don't put ideology in front of uh, your job. Um, yeah, that's, that's the last point. Actually, I've, I've um, already um, in this, um, I'm in this section. So what works in a 100% open source environment? Recording, very good. Ardor, as you've seen um, many times over this weekend, is quite the good software now. Um, even if you used it a few years ago and said, no, this is not, not really my kind of software. It's um, a whole new deal now, you can use it. But other programs, like um, you can make good music in Qtractor as well, uh, of course. Um, the music we are talking about is not that complex. It's complex on an on a intellectual or harmonic level maybe, but not in a recording process. Um, piano roll sequences, for MIDI inputs, they work quite well. Um, we have many of them in, uh, in the open source scene. Um, music notation for humans, I, um, like the sheet of sheet um, PDF I showed you earlier. The, it's three hearts alone for Lily Pond alone. I don't. The rest, uh, actually, I don't care. But Lily Pond alone is three hearts worth of music notation for humans. That means you can prepare. Excellent, excellent, really, really good music notation for printouts to give humans for the rare case when you actually let humans play your pieces. Um, synthesizers, great. Um, presets, not so great. Um, um, for me, um, yeah, the unfair approach of making your bass drum every time or doing it so, uh, so deep down by hand. Some people don't like it. I wouldn't do it. Uh, I have a different agenda. So, uh, yeah, some presets more, dear synthesizer developers, please, or power users. And, um, yeah, effects, I mentioned this earlier. They were good. Not so good. Sample instruments, there are some um, money icons there. That's the reason. That's the sole reason. Um, of course, you can produce um, open source instruments. But it has to be funded. There needs and um, yeah, I don't think it's um, it's overestimated. If I say this is very very large sums, like um, hundreds of thousands into the millions. Yeah, from what I know, and this was is already from ten years ago where I read these um, these numbers. So it may be even more today. Uh, physical modeling is a future tech. To be fair, like piano tech, um, you you. Uh, of course, it's not a future tech in the academic sense and research sense, but there are not many good virtual um, modeling programs. That's what I mean. So um, uh, it is a good um, a good um, approach for the future if you want, for example, stringed instrument, bold instrument, because all these detailed snippet recording of samples, um, it's a solution but um, there's not much investment in it. And maybe it's a pipe dream. Maybe it just doesn't work. I don't know that much about it except what's uh, on the user side. Uh, music notation for computers, that is you make, uh, you put notation in and accept the computer to play it well after some modification, of course. It's um, not that good as the icon indicates. Um, there's MuseScore, but MuseScore in this regard is a, a children's toy. You can't use it for this. Uh, they will claim otherwise they have a very good marketing uh, department. But um, I don't believe it because I've tried it. And other people tried it. And if you hear music produced with MuseScore, 
doesn't work. It's not, it's not for that purpose. That's, that's the whole reason. Um, yeah, and the others, um, I don't know. There is a, a one program in Windows called Notion 5, I think, or maybe 6 now, which is exactly for this purpose. It's a sequencer based on notation. So this will work, but it's, it's so, so, so a niche, so little, um, so little audience and potential customers that nobody does it. Um, my own program, one day, maybe will do it. Um, yeah, convenience and session management and putting all these jack cables all over the place, that can be um, solved. There is some, but um, I think um, that needs some, some love. Uh, yeah. Um, let's see what's on the next slide, I forgot. This is basically a summary. Um, I explored the first point, very um, elaborate earlier. Um, don't treat samples like real instruments, again. It's not. Learn them as their own instruments. Um, which is actually um, has benefits too. You, um, if you compose a, um, a piece for a real choir, you don't have only, um, you take into consideration, of course, how far, uh, how low, how high can they sing, but also to keep the motivation in the piece of music high. So if you have a, if you have a choir, and one voice is sing A ah on the same note for two minutes. That's it, that's your piece. This will work maybe 10 seconds and then, yeah, it gets tedious. Of course it gets tedious. Same for, for um, string sections. Um, those um, movie, orchestra, uh, movie orchestras, they pl need to play the same thing day and day and day again. Uh, scale up, scale down, scale up, scale down, staccato. And now syncopes, and the timpanis, all the full power. So a computer doesn't care. Take the choir sample, make it 10 minutes long, one note. It's possible. Let them play um, inhum inhumanly fast, of course. So it has benefits to treat them not like real instruments. Um, yeah, quality but artificial sounding, synthesized imitation is better than a crampy 90s samples. So that means if there's a synthesizer which sounds a bit, for example, like a harpsichord, a cembalo, then um, yeah, if that sounds good as its own instrument, use it. Um, you need to then, um, if you went into the composition with the mindset, I, I want a harpsichord, and then discover this, and you think, oh, that doesn't sound like, it, it's cool, but it doesn't sound like a harpsichord. Yeah, well, your audience doesn't know you wanted the harpsichord in the first place. So just use this, and do not use, uh, okay, let's see, um, what was the site called? Hammersound.net, uh, harpsichord.sf2. Yeah, it's, I, can, I can imagine this is a recorded harpsichord. It doesn't sound good, but it's harpsichord, so I take this. No, just take the, imita the imitation then, because in its own regard, it sounds better most likely, if it's really a 90s uh, SF2 instrument. Um, yeah, you have always the option to add spice with real recorded instruments. Um, if you can do it yourself, even better. That's actually the most likely source of recordings, you do it yourself. Um, many game composers are guitar players, so you hear a lot of stringed instruments, just um, strunk, you know, what's the strummed instruments in there. Yeah, um, but those are, if you um, think of a sharing uh, situation, like um, collaborate composition, of course, recorded instruments doesn't translate, don't translate. Okay. Um, here's my contact card, not much on there. Um, yeah, I like to chat. Um, I'm always on um, the RSC, so my account is always there. You can reach me and then when I'm there, I answer. Um, drop me a mail if you want. Um, yeah, I like writing mails. <laughs> uh, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah. 
um, let's go from front to there. Yeah. Um, so this is um, this is not so much a question as it is, um, uh, I think, an option you haven't yet considered. Um, in the uh, voice synthesization um, uh, uh, academic circles and development um, uh, uh, circles, there's something called the um, uh, 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 wave net, yes. Yeah. And um, they use that to uh, synthesize voice and um, they synthesize the voice by training a neural network by feeding it uh, just a lot of audio samples from uh, uh, people who just said things and talked. Um, but they did the same thing for piano music. And that actually sounded, to my ears, like a real piano. So um, why couldn't you just throw machine learning at the problem and solve it that way? Yeah, of course you can do it. I, I know these samples, the piano samples, they sound very, very convincing. It's good. Okay, it's piano, maybe that's easy for a machine too. Learning, I don't know. If we see strings, it's another, it's a whole different beast. But let's say it works very well for strings and voice and choir and um, woodwinds and brass. Super. Where's the program that does it? That takes time. You need to have a program. Where's, where's the um, LV2 or VST plugin or the standalone program that does it? So. This is exactly what I meant with, um, we have, of course, there are research projects, um, but usually they take, as many of you know, um, if ever, these take a lot of time to actually land in the consumer world. And maybe a little bit earlier for some open source software, because um, the consumers are often, they are people who can work around some issues. Um, yeah, but this is, a, this is a study, this is not, um, a program with a MIDI input? Um, no, but it is a program that can take... Uh, yeah, okay. It, it's not a program that can take MIDI input, but it is a program that can take uh, um, just much less consistent samples and generate much better output than the methods you have described that result in very, very expensive um, uh, results. So. Um, I, I said this to, to challenge the, the notion that it wouldn't be possible with open source things, but that, that's, that's kind of the thing. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, yeah. if the program is there, yeah. Well, we show us the evidence. Uh, I can play it. Maybe, you know, maybe another time. piano I understand, but what about violin? Yeah, maybe, maybe yeah. it works. Okay. Yeah, so I have I have a quick, quick comment and a question. A comment I wanted to address transitions. One of the ways that it's done, for example, in Heroes of Might and Magic, uh, many people know this fantasy game, uh, they have a short transitional piece between a battle and between the peaceful thing. So you don't have to do anything. It's like it has this uh, dogs with two heads running around on the meadow, right? And then they have... And then... And then when you win... And then it goes on to the peaceful music. And so all you do is you write just these transitional things, and that's it. So that's one of the methods. Uh, my question was about samplers. You mentioned Linux sampler. Maybe you said that even it's not that difficult to write a sampler. Does actually open source world have good samplers? No. <laughs> okay. when, I say, when I say samplers, um, many people um, especially with an, with an 80s mindset, um, say, wait a minute, of course they are good samplers, but this is a different definition of samplers. So samplers does not, does not mean in this context, like the um, hardware sampler, there's a keyboard where you put in one R uh, and then play it back. Of course, um, that is very easy for software. Um, this sample V1, for example, which is this kind of sampler. Um, but the, um, thousands of samples for one instrument kind of sampler with um, transitional material in between and some even some kind of scripting or AI, I would say even, which anticipates what is next and chooses a bit for you, behaves like a, like a human player more or less, uh, interprets your, your sequencing, your MIDI data even. Um, that is not at all available. Linux sampler has some scripting, but even that, it's, it, it's not an open source project. 
um, not in my definition, they disagree. But uh, I think that's a marketing trick for them. Okay. Yeah. Um, actually, I have a question regarding the music that you played uh, from Simon the Sorcerer. You said, uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, you've played like two versions. And I thought the one version was from the game. I, I made it to sound like the game. So I, I used some old sound fonts and some the MIDI, the kind of MIDI sequencing they would have used um, back then when I was uh, a child. Yeah, it's exactly what I was wondering about. So if you would have taken like the mod tracker file, most probably from the Amiga version of the game, it would have sounded much worse than what you can achieve now, even with the but it's like only two instruments and that's... And um, I have another question. Um, so if you would approach that problem of creating that music, you would buy the samples that what you said or because the effort to collect free samples and then match them, that's even another... Yeah, it takes a lot of time. So you actually did that or yeah that's an ongoing process the collection of samples i actually do this to this day um every month or so i look in forums Ma many people don't release these samples they just uh, say here in the uh, kvr forum here's a sample instrument i made upload this some some cloud service and um, if you're not fast enough the file will be deleted in in a month in a month or so because the cloud thing thinks it's some some um illegal stuff and they don't care so i'm i'm actively searching for for good licensed instruments and have a few but it's mostly it's um um kitchenware this no it's no joke it's actually a, a typical beginners project um everyone starts with um, sampling kitchenware because it's easy and it's effective and uh yeah so i have a lot of these and then pianos some guitars um drums and then it's really the, the the curve really drops down and um yeah i'm still doing this because there are uh, scenarios and situations where i want this for example in my my field education so i want to give my pupils the whole thing i want to i want to have them the instruments as well as the software so we can work together they can work at home or whatever they want i don't want uh, them to sign agreements um uh, to not share their um, pupils license with other with, with friends so um that may be possible but i want i don't want to think about this i just want to give them um, the instruments and the software um which can work but in a very narrow sense when it comes to instruments or um there are some open source games um or even um abstract um not existing games and just a collection of um, graphics and audio data like uh, what's the site opengameart.org um, where some composers upload their music. Um, it's made um, from whatever samples, I don't know, but um, if you have, if you take these and say, yeah, uh, good, we have now four, four tracks, which are very good, I want to use them in my game, but another, if, another one would be fine. I want to make my own, or somebody, some, someone else want to make a track which sounds like the four we already have. So that's not possible without the instruments. You need the instruments. You can't um, reproduce the style. So if you have the, you can share the, the MIDI data, of course, or the sequence sequencer project. It's all very easily possible, and it's it uh, it's yeah they do it, but in the end you need the instruments, and this is usually done in these um, circles. Uh, yeah, this is um, library x x. Um, well, that or whatever, and um, you can download here on um, torrent, rapid share, whatever. I yeah, illegal. So it's, um, I think it's a common practice, especially in hobbyists circles. But I, I think it could be done better. So that's one application of the complete open source ecosystem. The search goes on. If you know some, please let me know.
Okay. 